want to look at a broader look at sin. A biblical broader look at sin. I know that a lot of churches and ministers no more preach about sin. But I want to tell you the implication is that when we fail to take a strong look at sin, number one, we will forget eternity. That eternity has no end. Number two, we lose our focus and our value for heaven. Am I communicating? So it is necessary always as Christian that we don't forget that sin bites, sin destroys, sin is a virus. Unfortunately, a lot of us, if we don't look at sin from the biblical broad perspective, we seem to focus only thinking that sin is only immorality. And that's the problem of a lot of Christians. I want us to understand that it is far much more than that. Can I tell you, over focus on sin, sorry, over focus on television, on our phone, without balance, biblical, giving time to our, the word of God, is an error. The Bible makes us to understand that this word of the Lord must not depart from us. Is that clear? Good. So when we don't look at use this word of God as a balance to look at some of our practices and habits, we will not know that we are veered off from righteousness. Because the line, the boundary line between righteousness and unrighteousness is very slim, very tiny. That so many Christians and so many ministers we have walked out of the path of righteousness and we are walking in sin. Can I tell you, over concentration to this food, this handset is idolatry. And I want to ask you, is idolatry sin? Okay, thank God you answered. So many of us spent hours on the food. So much so that we don't even have time for our children. It's an error. We need to speak to ourselves. And you know the funny thing, Satan is in this food. You didn't hear what I said. Hell, then, then, this food can be hellish. I, something happened in the house and I was sharing the matter with my wife, bedroom discussion. And I said, this thing is hellish. Because I remember... We two of us watched a video of a mother. She was so concentrated on her phone that she lost focus on the child that was on the pram. And that child rode that he took the brother to rush and go and catch the brother, the junior one. It got to a point that the young man got offended with the mother, collected the phone for the mother and threw it into the trash can. <laughs> don't you see that that phone was hellish the concentration had passed from normal to demonism so we need to get a biblical view and see that a lot of we are going to look at so many scriptures so that we will begin to have a broader picture so that each of us can look at the area where we are veering off and balance our lives I shared with you before now I said to you that some of the things responsible for the failure of a lot of Christians why are we failing as Christians? Why is it that so many Christians, God is not answering their prayers? And I want to tell all of us, there are things God has, God has been trying to remove from some of us since we got born again, but we have refused to give up. And so, what God has to do is to withhold the one that is very precious to us until we release, until we make the adjustment. And when we make the adjustment, you will say, praise God, you can have it. If God once is preparing a sister for a servant of God, 
for a wonderful man of God, for a wonderful Christian. And that Christian, God has perfected the arrangement. But she is strong-willed, very, very quietly naughty. You know, some of us are quietly naughty. I'm talking about our sisters. Why some brothers are terrible. Some brothers are wonderful in the church. But when you go home, believe you me, they can hardly give their wife a good money to take care of the house. Brothers, I hope, I know you are not hearing me. Are you hearing? Good. That's another error. These things, God, can, God will insist. Why? The family is very important to God. The problem in the family affects not just the husband and wife. It affects their children. Some children, I have counseled some girls in my office, some of them, why are you not getting married? She, is not, she has lost interest. Why? He said, I don't think I like marriage. I'm not interested in marriage. Why are you not interested? When you probe in and probe in, you discover that there is a strong quarrel between the father and the mother. Hellish quarrel. Some of them are separated. The father and the mother have separated. The girl is living differently. The father is living differently. And the quarrel, the children are in the boundary line of the fire. The one, they go to the mother, the father is angry. He releases a curse. They go to the father, the mother is hellish. She fires another one with some curses. And the children just develop a very negative attitude about marriage. But this husband and wife do not believe they are living in sin. The Bible says because you cannot take care of the wife of your youth, God says your prayers will not be answered. Is it in your Bible? Good. Because it is sinful. It affects all their neighbors. Affects their in-laws. East, west, north, and south. Do you know that in fact sometimes it even affects the traffic warden and the policeman on the road who have not done anything. With all the quarrel, as a woman, as a man, as they finish the quarrel, as they drive in the road, when the policeman says, excuse me, can you park, can I see you? If you follow on, they, they, they will be transferred aggression. You set the whole society on fire because of a personal family problem. And that's why, brethren, God is interested in the family. And please, I want all of us to pay attention to family. Let us make our families to work. Let's start from there. Number one, what is sin? Sin is a willful transgression of God's law. God has given a law, a known law, that you should not be angry. You should can be angry, but sin not. But that is another, another complication. That you be angry and do what? Don't sin. God said, you should not, you should get rid of rot. The Bible says that no filthy word should come out of your mouth. The Bible says, and takes time to warn all of us, and said that jesting, jesting, jesting is a sin. So I want to ask you, what are you doing with the so-called, uh, what do you call them again? Comedians. What are you, comedian? And the language of their so-called comedy, most of them is a mockery of what is going on in the church. Listen to me. There are certain things some Christians paste in Christian platforms for which God will hold you responsible. Why? There are people with weak faith you are corrupting. So when you want to move certain things, think. Otherwise you err. The Bible makes it clear, you should not curse another Christian for whom God, that Jesus died for, to stumble. I thought somebody's listening to me. What is sin? Sin is, listen to me, sin is the greatest plague today that is ravaging the society, ravaging Christianity, hindering our prayers, hindering our relationship with God. And that's why we must deal with this because it is failure to reverence the holiness of God. That God is holy. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Thrice holy God. The angels are shouting holy, holy, holy. His temple holy. Everything. All the instruments in the, in the temple holy. We need to reverence him. And when we fail to reverence him, we sin. 
Sin is man's disdain. You know what I mean by disdain? Man's contempt. No challenge about the judgment of God. Some Christians, you tell them that what they are doing is wrong. They feel that they are, listen to me, the worst Christian, listen to me, I pray for it. The more you grow in faith and read this Bible, be careful. You can get to become too conscious that you have arrived. You may not say it, but the truth is that you are no more broken. You become unbroken. The word of God no more move you. You can quote it like grammar food as if you are a recording machine. But the truth is that when you look at the character of these brothers, you look at the character of these people, their heart is like a stone. The word of God doesn't fear. They don't fear. They no more tremble at the word of God. When you finish, they do what is in their mind. Listen to me. The gate of hell are open for you at that, depth, at that point. You are on a journey of no return. Only you can bring yourself back. That's one of the worst positions for a Christian to find himself. And that's the problem we have with a lot of old Christians, a lot of pastors. Before you say Jack Robinson, they quote scriptures for you. They justify. If you see, I've been in a meeting where this one will quote another scripture, this one will counter with another scripture. And I look at these people and I say, why am I here? How did I come here? Because these people are difficult to teach, difficult to correct. They can give you a headache talking to them because their mind is closed. If I listen to me, that's what, we, listen to me, the, their mind is the greatest stronghold. Their mind is a stronghold worse than a shrine. You can deal with a shrine more effectively than dealing with such hearts. I thought somebody said, listen to me. See, is that independent state of life where people live and feel that they can live without God. That's sin. And so many Christians are living at this level. They feel they can live without God. So many Christians looking at me now. You know, you have trusted your intelligence, your senses, more than you have trusted God. And that's why many times you don't even remember to pray. You don't present anything to God because you feel your senses will take care. And that's why when they begin to fail, God will not come there. When they begin to fail, God leaves them. Continue. Hear me. God has made this word in a way that he wants us to show absolute dependence on him. If we are Christians, we must show absolute dependence on God. My brother, pay attention to sin. Sin will make God to back you. And when God backs you, hear me, darkness has covered you. And when darkness covers you, witches will be urinating on your head. And every day you'll be binding witches and wizards. Listen to me, it's not supposed to be so. I teach you about dealing with witchcraft. I teach you about dealing with demonic powers. But listen to me, I want you to hear this very well. It is not right for you as an established Christian every day to be under demonic oppression. Why? You are a Bible say that you are a container of God. Look at the way my brother is sparkling. As a container of God, he carries the light, the light that shines, according to the book of John chapter 1, the light that shines in darkness, and darkness cannot withstand it, is inside him. And therefore, everywhere he appears, human eyes cannot see, but in the realm of the spirit, the demons are spiritual beings, they see the light. He can sleep in the shrine. He can go to a shrine inside an occult home, lie down and sleep. The spirits will only walk around him. They cannot enter him. Am I complicated? But you see today, every day, Christians are having an attack. And then they will call you that they just have an attack. Yes, it has become your, your ministry. Every day they come to your house to do revise. Am I complicated? It's not right. They are not supposed to be so. You are a child of the light. The Bible says light must conquer darkness. Because this light shines in darkness and darkness cannot be overcome. The Bible says you are more than conquerors. Your life must not be contrary to the word of God. Am I complicated? The problem is sin. The problem is sin. Sin is a deviation from the accepted biblical standard of behavior. That's sin. 
when you walk out of the biblical standard, deviation is sin. And can I tell you, you can do it with even with your church. Why? Doctrinal error. You are born again. You are of age. You went to school. The Bible said, the soul that sinned shall die. He didn't say the church that sinned. I thought somebody is hearing me here. Listen to me. I belong to a church. You must belong to a church. And listen to me. If I carry you in this ministry to things that are not biblical, my brother, you can still remain here because the Bible says you should be so. But hear me. Don't do the things that are not biblical. I thought somebody said, listen to me here. It's not biblical. So it is. There are doctrines. There are things that are not biblical. And I will tell you, I've been in a class, a lecture, and there were things that we are, the man was teaching. And I had to call him to order. And I said, excuse me, if you write this thing in an exam, I'm sure I'm not going to answer what you are writing, what you are teaching. He said, I will fail. I said, who told you I'm in a hurry to pass this class? I told you, I'm not in a hurry. So when he saw that he couldn't progress with that, he had to leave the argument because I, I, I was going to affect more people in the class. He had to leave it. My brother, this thing is about heaven. It's a personal race. It's about your life. Am I talking to somebody here? It's about your destiny. And listen, the book can just be closed. The Bible talks about a man. He was planning and thought this thing is a long journey. And one day he woke up. He said, oh, my food everywhere. The barn is full. I'm just going to sit down now and tell myself, rejoice. And the Bible said, the voice came from heaven. You fool. Your soul is required. This night, my brother, if the bandits meet you, if Boko Haram meets you, you may start going to your own heaven. Home. And listen to me. Things are bad now. What did I say? Things are very bad. And can I also tell you, it will get worse. A time is coming. If we don't pray and pray through, you will see human corpses lying on the streets of this country. And so, that time, you will see that God himself will come to save his own. And, let, and may God save you that time so that you'll be his own. Otherwise, you'll be on your way to heaven or hell. I thought somebody's listening to me. The days you are living are not normal days. There are very bad noise in the realm of the spirit. Are you listening to me now? And that's why I'm here. I have, I have to declare the full counsel of God. If you have been living your life, careless about sin, careless that one day there will be a day of judgment. Fearless of the fact I was sure God was ministering to me while I was in, a, in, a, in Luanda. I, was in, I had a lot of time to rest even though I didn't rest enough. I was supposed to stay there till Sunday. And now listen to me. The Lord began to minister to me. She, we sin. Caleb, are you listen to me? We sin. Pastor uh, Canon Casey, we sin before God. When God sends us people to minister to, and we do it shabbily, hear me. Are you listening to me? If we do it shabbily, the person backslide, God holds you responsible. Quote me. What he used as an analogy to me was medical doctors. And he said, look at the medical doctors. A lot of them are so committed to their profession that they are doing it. You know, a doctor who wants to make money will make money because you don't have choice that to trust him. Whatever he tells you, even his bill, nobody has to argue them. Do you? Okay. If they have to be that faithful, you better look at your own faithfulness. Are you listening to me? They are serving they don't tell you. They don't because of money and begin to... Do you know a doctor can decide to because of money and tell you, you have this problem. I saw this one. I saw this one. In fact, we are treating this one. We are treating. You don't have any choice. And so, in the same way, if I'm doing ministry, I have a responsibility to anybody a Christian God brings to make sure he doesn't lose faith in God. To make sure he doesn't begin to feel frustrated. That God has disappointed him. And on the same side, you have a responsibility to make sure you yourself, you're a Christian. 
Because, are you listening to me? Because Satan can use you to touch us. Because you have refused to do your own part. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody in this hall. Are we sitting together? Listen to me. Sin is a deviation, a transgression, a movement away, away from the revealed word of God. The word of God has revealed. Take for instance, a man should not wear the dress of a woman. A woman should not wear the dress of a man. And some sisters, don't mind, they are all looking holy now. When they leave this gate, go and see them on their corridor in the house. Even some of them, they wear trousers. If you see them, they want to look sexy. Good. When you look, you want to look sexy and you disobey God. No, it's not right. It's not right. It's not biblical. Suppose you arrive at the gate of heaven when you just die and you arrive there and the Lord said, depart from me. Thou walk out of iniquity. Your own is finished. All the labels. That's where it has ended. Because you wanted to look sexy. You wanted to look more attractive so that men can use you and more break your heart. And some of them will tell me, it doesn't matter. Uh, after all, you know, who, who said that trousers is men's dress? Thank you. Let me wear bra and skirt. And come from there and climb this pulpit and see whether some of you will not run away. Who told you it's a women's dress? Am I communicating? Let's respect the word of God. Do, have you ever seen where the Bible says in the book of Isaiah? He said, the posh, he, why, he said that a pot will not say to the maker, why did you make me like this? That scripture will judge many people. You know, there was a time so many ministers had to go to prison in Europe. Do you know? In Europe, so many ministers went to prison. Some of the ministers making noise in Nigeria today from Europe. I hope you know. They lost their church. Their churches were taken away from them. I don't want to call them. They are here making noise. Some of them have become politicians. When you see the way they talk, you see that they are talking for the, they are talking for the government in power. For money. But the truth is that they were driven away from Europe where their big churches are. And they are back here to find relevance. And because nobody wants to talk about their sin, they are here making noise. Can I tell you, do you know what was used in judging them? One verse. Is did the Bible say, let all things be done decently and in order? Decently and in order. If I, if we, if I, by the grace of God, God used me to start this work. So, I have seen ministers, a lot of them, not yes, not one. They, they account, all the account of the church is in the name of the pastor. I can tell you worse things I've seen. But can I tell you, that sin, that scripture is contra, is, is already have arrested them. Let all things be done decently and in order. Is that one decent? I'm asking. Is it in order? Bible. Bible. That's how many people. So, my brother, let's do things decently and in order. If the word of God said, don't wear trousers, please throw it, forget about it. In fact, don't even quarrel with God in your heart. Don't feel that God he has taken away your pleasure. When God asks me to leave Lagos and come here and leave up being a lecturer and come here, it will be seen if I obeyed him and came here and I'm murmuring and say, why would I be allowed to be, you know, stay in Lagos? That's an error. Am I communicating to somebody in this meeting? Are we sitting together? Please, please, please. Let's go to Bible. I want to show you some scriptures because when we look at some of these scriptures, some of these things from the biblical point of view, you will begin to understand that a lot of us are already walking in error without knowing that we are walking in sin. Very quickly, let's see the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Let's read verse 25 and then verse 28 to 31. There you will see nine sins Christian believers must put away. The Bible says put away. And how many are they? Nine. See them from verse 25 and then 28. We are four. Putting away, number one, lying. Today, a lot of Christians, you can't even trust their word. Putting away, lying. Speak everyone truth 
with his word, neighbor. For we are what? Members one of another. Stop. Let's stop telling lies. As Christians, our words should be our bond. And that's also what I was saying. Go to the next one. Verse 28. Let him that stole, steal no more. But rather let him labor, walking with his own hands, the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that needed. 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. This one. In fact, many of us need repentance. Sometimes I use some words and my wife will tell me that's confession. We say, gee, I will know that I have, it has escaped. You need to deal with corrupt what? Communications. Let no corrupt communication do what? Proceed out of your mouth. But that one which is good to the use of what? Edify the one that will build others. That it may minister grace unto the hearers. 30. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. A lot of us are grieving the Holy Ghost. And each time you grieve the Holy Ghost, he backs you. And every time he backs you, you are naked. You are naked. You are without a cover. And that's when the enemy comes to plunder many Christians. I told you about a Christian looking for a child for many years. We prayed. The Lord bless her with two twins. She broke a law given to her by the word of the Lord. And of course, we, as if we knew, we told her, said, listen, 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 avoid this. She broke it. And immediately she broke it. We didn't know why. Suddenly she had miscarriage. It was only her relation who was praying for her. And the God showed her, look at what you did. She now agreed. Yes, I was warned. But initially she was angry, angry with everybody, including God. So many times, many of us are angry with God for an offense we caused. Grieve not whereby you are sealed unto the day of the resurrection. That is what seals you. Without the Holy Ghost, you are naked. Let all bitterness. Somebody say bitterness. bitterness. Touch your neighbor and say, I hope you are not bitter. <laughs> Tell him, say, neighbor, I know you are sitting by my side. Do you really like me? From your heart. Or you are, or you are angry with my presence. Some people in the church... When you are sitting with them inside, they are angry. Am I right? They are angry. Some people here are quarreling with some people. Yesterday, a sister was complaining to me. One of my workers was angry with her. And she would greet her. He was like, oh. And when every, I would come and see her praying in tongues. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop all these noises. Noisome symbols. Let no bitterness and rot and anger, and clamor, and evil speaking, be put away from you. Without all malice. That's the word of God. This is Bible. So, a lot of us have different things we need to deal with in our lives. Some just think, oh, because I'm not living in so you are holy. Eh? The lie. It's not true. There are things, when you get close to some of them, their anger is hellish. Others, when you go close to them, covetousness. Go to others, blasphemy and jealousy, hellish jealousy. My brother, let your mind be broad. Love one another. Bible says we are one. Christian love is supposed to be more powerful. That was why when I came to church, I was training brethren here, almost my bachelorhood savings. I spent them training brothers in the theological school. We are in one sandals and one shoe. I'm not guessing. I am not exaggerating. God is my witness. All through my back, I, do you know, it was a few months to my marriage that I got a, a, a television in my city room. And yes, I was not training anybody from my place. All the brethren I trained, all I got from it was that when you finish training them, they will raise one trouble. My brother is here, you're a witness. He was in one of the meetings. He was the secretary. He wrote out, I brought out 18 points against one brother. 18. They, he, I said to him, if you controvert one, the whole panel, I said, if you controvert one under God here, then I lied against him in the remaining 17. And he said that he's sorry. And yet he's a minister, speaking in tongue. Many of these, how about my license, international license, when I had no license. Paid for them international ordination. When I, I was preaching as a layman. And they are born again. 
their frustration today, they will see, as seen approach, no, it is their iniquity that is binding them. They need restitution. Don't do things anyhow. The Bible says you shouldn't use your freedom anyhow. My elders had to call me, sit me down. Say, no, this my private, my training people is causing problem in the ministry. After all, I'm going to go to the papa. Say, stop. Do you see that God, the devil was using them to stop a program of heaven? Three of us. That is how also some of us, you should watch. Don't allow your character to close the door against somebody else. Don't allow it. Ephesians chapter 4, 17 to 19. You will see nine sins again. The Bible says, saints, saints must not be involved in these sins. What are they? Say this, I say therefore, and testify in the Lord that you, that you henceforth, walk not as other Gentiles walk. Let's not walk as unbelievers. Stop walking like prostitutes. Stop walking like unbelievers. We can't live like them. Our values and their values must not be the same. A Christian should not become worldly. The Bible says that you henceforth don't walk like them in the vanity of their mind. Their mind is vain. Yours is not. Holy Ghost is there. Go to the next verse. Having the understanding that can be alienated from the life of God. Do you see? It separates you from God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of the heart. Their heart is hardened. Their heart is not renewed. It's not regenerated. And you are regenerated. And because you are regenerated, you have a conscience. They don't have conscience. The Holy Spirit will even tell you, walk this way. Don't walk this way. This thing is not right. If you are a child of God, has come to a level, Holy Ghost can no more correct you. You have a problem. Yes. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto what? They have given themselves over what? To lasciviousness. Lewd life. To walk all on cleanliness. How? With greediness. That's what believers, Gentiles. Who being past but you have not so learned Christ. Touch your neighbor say, we have not so learned Christ. We have not so learned Christ. Let's quickly go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Here, we are going to see 19 biblical sins. I want you to have a broad view, but biblical broad view of sin. We are going to see 19 sins from which, as a Christian, as a child of God, as a minister, you must turn away. This know also that in the last days, and we are in the last days, perilous time, prices of goods will rise. There will be no jobs. Perilous times will come, but let them not make you become abnormal. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Selfishness. Are you selfish? You only think about yourself. You don't think about others. Some, the, all they are looking for is how to use others and break through. And they can they are not interested how their life can bless somebody else. If that's the kind of life you live, you are not a Christian. You are not a Christian. And you won't go far. You won't go far. It's not far. It's not true. God has made this word. I had this in front of you, man. He said, God has created this in this, in this world in such a way that <laughs> you can't live alone. You need me, I need you. And that's true. Comprehensively, I agree. 100% plus one. For men shall be lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, <laughs> proud. Have you seen? Even ministers. When they are coming, and somebody will be walking like a mighty go wrestler to the altar. It's not biblical. What did I say? It's not biblical. It's not biblical. Boasters, proud, blasphemous. So when you see people today saying all kinds of things against the church, against ministers of God, they look. They are the spirits of the last days. 
Disobedient to parents. Ah, you don't need to be informed. This one now is in almost every house. The children these days, they don't want to be directed. When they come out from the net, they tell you that they know how to run their lives. They, I mean, they know everything. And it's difficult. Why? The spirit of the last days is dealing with them. Disobedient to parents. We must learn to walk in obedience. There are certain things our parents know. Lying on this floor. If we put you on the last floor of this building, you can't see what they see. Lying down. A lot of them have gone through experiences. Hard ones. Nothing is new. According to the Solomon, the book of Ecclesiastes. Am I right? Nothing is new. I was telling, was it somebody in, uh, uh, in Luanda? I was sharing with the person who came to my room. And we were sharing. I said, when I was in secondary school, there was a trouser that was raining. They call it uh, keep her back clean. It comes like this, swells there. And with six inches, and you can see how fat I am. When I wear six inches, I, and that kind of, I will look like a rope thrown from heaven. <laughs> and I will be walking. <laughs> I bet because it was fashion, it was the thing raining. My God, I will buy two decades. The next time I got three decades. And I was. I always would like to walk on the road street so that they will know I'm coming. <laughs> eh? You know. So after that, suddenly, and we didn't if that one didn't last one year, another one appeared. They call it Bugalulu. <laughs> From here to the ground. Like that. It will enter two heads, human heads will enter inside your leg. And we were walking. Boo, 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 boo. And we call it Bugalulu, Bugalulu. I say, yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> nah. Before six months, that one has expired. Another one appeared. I just got back to school. Took my dresses to home. Of course, I, I am know how to sew, both hand machine and sew this thing. I learned that one from primary school because my mom did home economics in London. So I just took scissors. <laughs> I resold all my dresses. They became pencil. I came into school. People were asking me, Chima, any problem? I said, no, there's no problem. <laughs> he said, what's going on? I said, there's no problem. I said, I am tired of fashion. You can continue with the fashion. You see this fashion? It can make somebody crazy. I don't want crazy again. I will be on this, my pencil. You will all come back to pencil. Have they not come back to pencil now? <laughs> So tell your neighbors, there is nothing new on the earth. So please, let's take it easy. All our parents, they know all this story. They know everything. Nothing is new. Amen. Thank, unthankful. Ingratitude. The level of ingratitude I see, even among believers, is, is worrisome. Please, learn to tell somebody, thank you. Tell somebody, listen, thank you. Tell your neighbors, say thank you. Tell him, I, I appreciate your, your company. I love you, I love you. with all my heart. All let's, let's learn to be cheerful. Somebody say cheerful. cheerful. Untactful, unholy. But we should be holy. Without natural affection. No natural love. Because some of them, we are not giving love in their family. And they are not making any effort to change. My brother, the fact that your family did not show you love. No, it's not mean. You must continue the same aggressive. If you see the way some of them walk, you know there is trouble. If they carry their bag. <laughs> Even their face will kill a fly. <laughs> no. Tell your neighbor, say, please smile. Please smile. smile. Your face can drive a lot of people. It does not show holiness. It doesn't show holiness. Hear me, my brother. Hey, hey, hey. Without... Natural affection, truth breakers. These are law breakers. There are some people, that's their law. The Bible says false accusers. Let's control what we say about others. These are the spirits of the last days. Which one are you guilty of? Incontinent, fierce, aggressive, despisers of those that are good. When they see people who are good, hey, they don't mind her every time. She wants to be noticed. They don't mind those matter. They are, they, they are looking for, they want to be seen. And you will not do what they are doing. No. Be careful. They are looking for God's trouble. 
you are attacking God's program and he will attack you back. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. And God said, from such people, fly, fly away. I want you to bow your head. You have heard the word of the Lord. What change, what correction do you need to make? Ask the Lord to help you. Oh, to be like thee. Oh, to be like thee. Blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. For with your fullness, call me your sweetness. Stand thou Oh, to be like thee. Oh, to be like thee. Blessed Redeemer, pure as a Call me your fullness. Call me your sweetness. Stand down on image deep in my Father, we thank you for the privilege of your word. We present ourselves afresh to you, including myself. Take hold of us by your spirit. Help us to walk in the consciousness of the fact that there will be a day of reckoning. And help us, oh God, to be able to deal with sin in our life and they will sin biblically in a broad spectrum. Help give us a broader view of sin so that we holistically we will sort out ourselves before you. Break every stony heart and make us teachable, oh God, and make us courageable. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.